Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Creative Writing. It's good to be back. Uh, for those of us that are joining for the first time, uh, welcome to Creative Writing during the summer with Delphian Online Learning. For anybody that was here this spring, it's good to see you guys back. Uh, I want to see who's here today. I think there's some names that I'm going to recognize. AG is here. Alara, Amelia, April, Haley, Katya, Lexi, Logan, Lydia, Mackenzie, Milo, Nim, and Nish. Hi, everybody. I recognize a lot of those names. These are some of our favorite writers. <laughs> and for anybody that's new, really happy to have you guys here for the first time. So uh, creative writing is one of my favorite subjects. I teach creative writing here at Delphian, and I'm really happy to have you guys here to learn it over online learning. Uh, I wanted to tell you about how it's going to work this summer because I've got a big plan and I want all you guys to be part of it. So here's my plan for the summer. What we're going to do is during the spring, we were kind of learning subjects one by one, and I'd send you guys out in the world to write and carry on. And I thought for the summer, I wanted to kick it up a notch. Here is the plan. So I want you guys to... Uh, we're going to have at least one creative writing class a week, probably more, but I want you to watch our summer writing webinars, and then I want you to start working on an awesome story. Uh, every time you watch one of our creative writing webinars, you can take that information and continue working on the story that you are sort of writing going along with the webinars. Um, as you go, you can share that story with me, and I will give you feedback on it. Uh, I'll give you tips or I'll let you know what I love about your story, uh, what I think you can improve in your story, and we'll kind of work on your story together as you write it. And at the end of the summer, uh, when, our la when we do like our last classes, I want to put those stories together and make kind of a collection of short stories that we'll then share with everybody. So if you are part of this webinar, I want to basically make like a It'd be like a, I'll email it out to everybody and it'll be sort of like a short story collection. Uh, we could probably make a cool cover for it. And then once you have it, you can share those stories with your friends and family and show everybody, I wrote one of these stories that's here in this collection. You can give it out. So that's my plan for the summer. I hope you guys are excited about it. As always, if you have any questions or uh, you want to share anything or say anything, in the Q&A box down at the bottom of your screen, you can ask any questions or share anything you, you want to say. So let's see. Already in the question and answer area, April says, it's so great to be back. I agree. <laughs> it's so great to be back and writing with all of you guys. Uh, Mackenzie's here. Hi, Mackenzie. Um, Lorenzo is here with April, and he says that he missed everybody too. It's like we have a writer's group here. You know, I, I miss my fellow writers here. Uh, Shanna's here. Hi, Shanna. Um, you haven't missed anything yet. We're just talking about the plan for the summer. Uh, I got some big plans. We're all going to write stories together. And then we're going to put all those stories together into a collection. And then it's going to be like a, a Delphian online learning writers club short story collection. Something like that. We'll work on the title. How uh, Lydia asks, how would we share our stories with you? Uh, you can always email them to online.learning at delphian.org. That goes straight to me because I'm now the person who's like in charge of all the all, all of the online classes. I'm helping out all of the other teachers. Uh, anything that you need help with, you can always email me. I'll put that email address up on the screen later so you can start sending me stuff like stories. Shanna likes the background. I like it too. It's like a fantasy world. Writing is all about creating worlds in our heads. So I thought this background did that well. <laughs> um, Milo asks, can I use a story that I've written before? Like the one that I wrote with a kid stuck in time. Um, I think what I want to do for this summer is to try to write new stories that we work on here together. I mean, at the same time, I'll have no idea if it's a new story from you or not, but <laughs> I think it'd be fun if it was a collection of stories that we write right now, here this summer. Also, another thing is that if you write a new story for this collection, then you've written another story. And as writers, 
we got to keep on writing. We got to keep on moving forward. But I'll ultimately leave the decision to you. If you want to like rework something you've already written, that's probably fine too. All right. More people saying hi. Uh, Shanna asks, will it get published? Um, that's not really my intention right now. It's more just to make the collection share with all of you guys. And then you can uh, give it to family and friends. You could say, my story is published in this collection, but my plan is not to like sell it or anything. I just want to give it to you guys to give away freely to everybody else. So you can share it with as many people as you want. Um, let's see. <laughs> uh, Milo's mentioning the story he wrote. Yep. I remember you talking about that one. Amelia uh, was working on one with a pizza named Steve. Yes, Amelia, I do remember the pizza named Steve. <laughs> um, yeah, Milo's asking, what is the email address again? I'll put it up on the uh, screen later in the webinar, but I'm also going to send it to you right now. I can type it in so that you have it. There you go. It's just been sent to you. All right, great. So let's get into it. Let's get into creative writing today. So because we're at the start here, because I would like most of you or all of you, if possible, to write a new story for the, stump, for the summer, we've got to start at the beginning. We've got to come up with ideas for what are we going to write about? And this is always an interesting subject for people. If you, if we, if you were here in the spring when we talked about this before, Hopefully today, you don't feel like this is going over it again. Hopefully it's in, in, a, in a new time, freshly making you think about ideas and where they come from. I've got a few activities here uh, that you may not have done before, but the whole idea is to get our minds thinking about what can we write about. So here is the first activity I want to do with you guys. So idea activity one. We're going to make two lists. In the first, describe what makes your favorite books and stories so good. In the second, describe what you did not like about the least enjoyable books or stories you've read. We will use these lists to help us write our stories. So if you've done this in the past, uh, let's do it again because you've probably read new books. You've probably read new stories since the last time you did an activity like this. So right now, fresh in summer, June, 2020, I want you to think about what makes your favorite books or stories so good. And then in the stuff that you've read that you didn't like, what made you not like it? Now, these lists that we're making here are not going to be just lists of our favorite stories. I don't want a list that says like, you know, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Uh, what I want more is, what is it about Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe that you like? Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to bring up uh, my own piece of paper here. This is in Google Docs. You can write this down on a sheet of paper with pencil or pen. You can bring up, you know, uh, Microsoft Word or Google Docs. You could do this on a whiteboard. Uh, you could do this in crayon. You could write this with a stick in the sand if you have nearby. However you want to write, it's totally fine. But I'm going to do it here in Google Docs so I have this. Uh, so I have this saved for the future because we're going to refer back to this. So uh, I really like The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. But I'm not just going to say The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. What I'm going to say instead is that I like stories, oh, spelling, I like stories where people go through magical portals. I like stories where people open up like a cabinet or a cupboard and they find there's a magical world on the other side. I like stories like the Alice in Wonderland where somebody tumbles down a rabbit hole and they end up in another fantasy land. Uh, I love those stories. In general, writers and readers usually call those portal stories. Like a portal is kind of like a doorway to another world. Uh, I love stories like that. So I'm not writing down Lion, the Witch in the Wardrobe because that series of books is already written. I'm writing down I like stories where people go through magical portals because that's one thing that I could write about when I write my own story. Um, let's see if there's any questions on that. Oh yeah, Nim and Nish asked, do we need to handwrite the stories or use a computer? 
My advice is that if you have a computer available to you, to write on a computer. Because then as you write something, you can go back and edit it. You can add to it. You can rewrite it. You can handwrite too. It's totally okay. Just sometimes when it's time to go back and fix things or add to it, it can take more time if it's handwritten. If it's typed on the computer, it's saved, it's there, it's forever. You can do as much stuff as you want with it. Shanna asks, how long is a short story? That is a very good question. Um, there's a lot of debate about that. Some people disagree about, you know, where does a, sto a short story end in like a long story, which is often called like a novella or a novel. Um, there's some disagreement about that. But usually short stories are like a few thousand words or less. Once it gets longer than a few thousand words, it's kind of a different category. The main categories are short story, or the shortest, of course. That's anything from like, you know, one paragraph to a few thousand words. Uh, something longer than that is usually, the main word for that is novella. That's kind of like, that word means like shorter novel. So the shortest stories are just called short stories. At the longer end, you have novels. A novel can be, you know, it can be 150, 200 pages long, or there's some novels that are a thousand pages long or longer. Uh, in between the kind of medium category that you don't see as often, they're called novellas. But uh, actually in modern day writing, we're seeing more and more novellas getting published. Uh, there are several really good novellas that have won awards in recent years. Uh, I've read some of them. It's kind of that category that's kind of in between short and long is getting more popular. Okay, so uh, yeah, you guys could write. Uh, some, I see uh, some people are already writing their lists in the Q&A box. You could do that, but I'd actually recommend that you write it on your own sheet of paper or on your own like Google Docs or Microsoft Word. The reason why is I want you to save it. We're gonna refer back to this later on. If you want to maybe write it in Google Docs or handwrite it and then also write it in the Q&A box, totally okay, that'd be awesome. But make sure you put these ideas down somewhere that you will be able to refer back to them later. All right, so I'm going to go back to my own list that I'm writing and we're just gonna kind of work on this at the same time. I'm gonna write my list, you guys write your lists, and then we can compare notes afterward. So feel free to keep on writing as you listen in or watch what I'm working on here. So the good stuff. I like stories where people go through magical portals. I like, you know what, I don't need to write I like every time. I'm just gonna say superpowers. Oh, I love superheroes, superpowers, I love stuff like that. Um, I like stories where, um, I like when the characters are good at things. <laughs> um, you know, I like stories where people have to overcome obstacles too. Uh, that makes for a good story. But I don't usually like reading stories about people that are kind of bad at everything. <laughs> I find that kind of annoying as a reader. So you know what, I'm gonna put that down in my second list. I don't like reading stories where the character is bad at everything. That's fine if you do like the, that kind of story. I just find that personally a little bit annoying. And the good thing about recognizing that is that when I start to write my story, I'm gonna to try to avoid that. If I think to myself, oh yeah, I'm gonna have this guy and he's like bad at everything. I have to say, wait, hold on, Corey. You don't like that when you read stories, so don't try to write about that. When you know what you like to read about, you can try to write about that kind of stuff and you'll have a lot more enjoyment of it and that'll come across to your reader. If you don't enjoy what you're writing about, they're probably going to be able to tell because your kind of feelings about what you're writing come through in what you wrote. Um, you may have seen this before in school assignments. 
if a teacher assigned you to write about something and you're like, oh no, like this is so boring, what you end up writing usually is kind of boring to read too. The assignments where you're like, oh, I love this subject, or like, this is so exciting. That excitement comes through in what you wrote. The words that you choose, the examples that you come up with, how you describe things, the reader can tell. So when you're choosing something to write about for creative writing, try to pick the things that are most exciting to you. And then when you write about them, that excitement will come through to the reader. Okay. So let's see if there's any more questions in here right now. I think you guys are putting some good examples in here. Let's see. I'm just going to pick a few of these out because you guys, because you're writers, you write so much in the Q&A box and I love it. I just don't always have time to read all of it out loud. Um, Shanna says that uh, Shanna likes stories that have adventure, fun, mystery, and a little bit of romance. Uh, Shanna does not like it when they fail uh, or when they make one of the main characters die. So I'm assuming in Shanna's story, she should not plan on having the main characters die because that won't be enjoyable to her, probably won't be enjoyable to the reader. But I bet Shanna will write a story that has adventure, it's fun, it has some romance in it. That'll be great. Amelia likes that the Chronicles of Narnia have adventure in them. So great, make sure you put adventure down on your list. Uh, April asks, have I watched Jumanji? Yes, I have. Those are fun movies, lots of adventure and excitement. So yeah, those are things you can put on your list too. Uh, Mackenzie says, I like stories with dragons. And then she corrects herself. I love dragons. So I bet if you write about dragons, that love for dragons will come through in what you write. Um, Katya is reading a book that's 900 pages long. That's amazing. What book is that? Um, Amelia says, okay, so The Lord of the Rings, very popular book series. But Amelia says, I don't like The Lord of the Rings because of the long talking periods. That's totally okay. So probably what you want to put down on your like, I do not like list is long periods of talking. It would make sense to put that on your don't like list. So you leave that out. I find even when I kind of know what I don't like, I have to remind myself. Because if I don't remind myself, then I might find myself writing a long period of talking in my story. And then I go, hold up. I don't enjoy this when I read it. So why am I putting this in my story for my readers? It doesn't make any sense. But we have to remind ourselves. AG likes spells, explosions, monsters, swords, talking animals. And he does not like uh, when the main characters die or when the paragraphs are way too wordy, when there's way too much, like talk, 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 talk. Totally get it. Um, oh, somebody's asking what email to send to. Uh, Nim and Nish, let me put that up right now. I'll put that up at the top of my page. So uh, the email address you can send stories and whatnot to is online learning at delphian.org. And that will come straight to me. So let me make that a little bit bigger for you guys to so all see. Boom, online.learning at delphian.org. I will leave that up there so you guys can all see that. Okay, I'm gonna keep on working on my list here. What else do I like in stories? I like magic. I like reading stories that have magic in them. Um, I like stories uh, where people explore, exploration. Let me make this a little bit smaller so you guys can read all this while I leave up the email address. The good stuff, my good stuff list. Uh, magical portal, superpowers, when the characters are good at things. Magic, exploration, um, a little bit of romance. That's good, somebody said romance. That's fun. Um, I like um, some battle scenes, some action. That's fun in a story. Um, I really like maps. I like reading maps. I like, uh, you know, going on Google Maps, looking at paper maps. I'm actually teaching about maps later in the week too. So I want a story that has maps in it. I want it, when I read a story, I love it when I open the front of the book and one of the first things 
is a big map in there. Oh, I spend time, I like look at every part of the map. I read all the little names of towns and rivers and everything. If you have a map in the front of your book, uh, my chances of buying it just went up by like 100%. All right, and my not good stuff list, what else do I not like in a story? Uh, I'm trying to leave that online learning address up there. Um, yeah, I don't like reading stories where characters talk for several pages with nothing happening. When you guys said that, and I agree, I'll be honest, I need a, I need a nice balance of things happening and characters talking. If they just talk for eight pages, it's sort of a little bit of a, okay, when are we gonna move on? <laughs> All right, good. So that's my list. I'm gonna leave that up there while I look and see if you guys have any more questions or wanna share anything more. Um, Amelia likes Aslan from Narnia, that's awesome. Katya, Katya's good stuff list includes magical stuff, animals, action, bright colors, princesses, comedy. Bad stuff includes a sad ending, death, or stupid bad actors. Yep, I can agree with all of that. Milo says he's jumping into writing his story. I love it. Milo must already have an idea, and that is awesome. Shanna loves any mythical story uh, and animals. Haley does not like stories when the main character is always perfect. I agree. It's kind of annoying if they're already good at everything. There's like... How do they improve? How do they get any better? Um, let's see. Nim and Nish also love magic. Um, Shanna says, I can't really write a lot of talking, but I enjoy reading it. That's okay. You should probably put uh, some good conversation scenes in your story so you can work on it. Uh, yes, AG, that is correct. Online.learning at Delphian.org. Okay, good. So let's move on to the next little activity. You guys can keep on working on these lists later, by the way. Um, here we go. So next thing, uh, I want you all to think about uh, characters. Let's think of interesting characters for a story. And we'll talk more about this in a later webinar, but I want you to just get started thinking about characters. Because there's kind of, I think there's two opening types of ideas that we can have. We could start with an interesting character or an interesting kind of situation. So for this idea activity, I want you to make a list of interesting characters. What is wild or out of the ordinary about these people? So for this activity, I don't want you to list or describe characters that exist in other stories. Um, I don't want you to write down you know, James Bond or uh, Black Panther or people that already exist in stories. I want you to come up with interesting character ideas. And they don't have to have names. It could just be like, what's a really out of this world character idea? What if we describe something like uh, a girl is born who has butterfly wings? What would her life be like? You could start with a really interesting character idea and expand out from there and try to think of the types of situations that would come up trying to live your life with butterfly wings. Do, do secret agencies try to capture you to you know, figure out why you have butterfly wings? Can you fly up in the sky super fast or do you just kind of float around slowly? Just one little silly idea of a person, butterfly wings. My imagination starts going, huh, what would that be like? So let's open up our writing spots and idea activity number two, interesting character ideas. So that was my first one. And I want you guys to make a list too. So a girl is born with butterfly wings. That's an interesting character to me. I don't know what you guys think. Uh, what else could we write down? How about um, uh, a guy works at a pizza place and he finds out, uh, and he finds 
he can magically make pizzas talk. Yes, one of our uh, uh, viewers did start creating a story about a pizza named Steve. That's where I got my idea from. It's okay to get some ideas kind of uh, inspired by other people. <laughs> uh, what would we write a story about if a, if a guy can magically make pizzas talk? I don't know, but that to me is a pretty wild character idea. Um, what other kinds of characters could we have? Um, a woman who can swim through the earth. What if a person could uh, swim through the dirt and rocks and kind of go underground and it was like swimming through a swimming pool, but under the dirt? What kind of uses would there be for an ability like that? I think we could go some pretty wild places with an idea like that. What are you guys coming up with? What are your crazy character ideas? Uh, Milo says, a person with a snake tail. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, Nim and Nish say, how do we get the lists? Oh, so on your own computer, if you want to type up a list, you'll need to open up like Google Docs or uh, uh, another program for writing like Microsoft Word. Or if you're like on a Mac computer, opening up your word processor. Uh, if you have, if you're not sure how to do that, you could ask a parent or a friend that's around that might know how to do that. It's also okay just to uh, get a piece of paper and a pen or pencil and just write it down on paper. If you'd like to share something with the, with the class, you can also write it just in the Q&A box. But um, I recommend that you get a piece of paper or on your computer that you write down your ideas so that you can hold on to them and keep them. One thing that most successful writers do is they're constantly writing down little ideas. They'll write down ideas for characters or write down ideas for stories. And whatever they're thinking about, they're always writing down on like a little scrap of paper and they put it in their pocket. Or you might keep a little notebook where you write down your ideas uh, just while you're going about your day. Uh, the worst thing for a writer is when you have a great idea and then you go on with your day and you're like, what was that idea? And it's gone. <laughs> so while we're doing these idea activities today, I recommend that you uh, type them or write them down in a place that you can save them and remember them. Uh, Mackenzie asks, does the character have to be human? Of course not. You could write about an alien or uh, a dragon or anything else that you'd like. Um, here, here's an example. Lydia says, a mermaid falls in love with a human, or twins are born. One is a girl and is born with a monkey tail. One is a boy and is born with a lion tail. That is awesome. See, we're not really thinking about a situation yet. We're just thinking about really interesting characters. Um, I'm gonna open up my idea activity list here. Um, a woman who can swim through the earth. How about, uh, to answer that question, we say um, a baby dragon is born. It is the first uh, dragon to be born on Earth, for real. Uh, so this dragon uh, has to figure out how it hatched from a chicken egg. <laughs> I may be thinking of an actual story that I read one time. <laughs> I think that's similar to, uh, I hope I'm not uh, copying an already published idea, but I'm pretty sure there is a book out there where like a, a, maybe it's a dinosaur. I think a dinosaur or a dragon hatches from a chicken egg. So how about I change that a little bit. <laughs> uh, this dragon has to figure out how it hatched um, from a hawk's egg. There we go. That's a little bit different. <laughs> so Maybe there's a red-tailed hawk and it has a nest up in the top of a tree, but one of its eggs hatches and it's a little baby dragon. And this mother red-tailed hawk has several red-tailed hawk uh, chicks and a dragon chick. And the red-tailed hawk mama has to raise a little baby dragon too. That would be pretty wild for that, uh, that hawk. Uh, so those are some character ideas. I wanna read a few more of your ideas that you are all sharing. 
AG says, a young teen that works in a restaurant that serves cake. Uh, one day he discovers that he can levitate things with his eyes. He accidentally hits a customer in the face with a cherry cake when he first found out and didn't have control over it. He was fired. He then fooled Penn and Teller, the magicians, to make a living with magic. I love it. You're starting with a really wild character there, and the story idea just kind of rolls out from there. It's awesome. Shanna says, Tallulah is a brave, adventurous girl and has a secret. She is a fairy with feathery wings uh, when she wants to. Maroni is a shy boy in high school, but he has another life. He is a guardian of the fairy realm. That sounds awesome. Malto is the villain in this story. He wants to conquer the fairy realm and is married to Shamri. Shanna, that sounds super awesome. Uh, Nim and Nish say that they have a few ideas for the story. Awesome. I would love to hear them. Uh, Katya says, triplets are born. One is born with a neck as long as a giraffe. <laughs> the second is born uh, with eyes that were eggs. And the third one is born with a mermaid tail. <laughs> that is wild. Um, let's see. Amelia is about, has a character that can blast into space. Very cool. And Milo is making a story about a kid with a snake tail. Very awesome. So I love your guys' character ideas. Very, very cool. All right, idea activity number three. So you can start out with a really cool idea for a character, or we can think of extraordinary situations for a story. You can start with, uh, Let's make a list of crazy out of this world situations a person could encounter. And then we'll kind of figure out uh, what kind of characters encounter that situation afterward. So instead of starting with a really cool character idea and then figuring out what sort of situations they get involved in, let's come up with some crazy situations and then figure out what characters get involved with them afterward. It's kind of the opposite direction. So. We're gonna open up our page again, our writing idea page. This is like my, this is right here. This is like my computer notebook. You guys could have a notebook that you just carry in your pocket with all these ideas. After this webinar is over, you can just write down more ideas. That'd be great. Okay, so this is gonna be crazy situations. All right. And by the way, I always, I don't plan these ahead of time because I just want to come up with them in real time like you guys. I don't plan these out ahead of time because they need to be spontaneous. Okay, so what are some crazy ideas? How about um, a child looks out the window of their dining room while eating breakfast. Uh, they see a door open in a tree and a line of uh, gnomes. Gnomes like a little magical creature. A line of gnomes come out. That's just, I just came up with that. That's just the start of a story. I have no idea where that would go. And I don't know what kind of character this child is. I don't know if it's a boy or a girl or what. What I'm more interested in, it, what I'm more interested in is the situation. How wild would it be you're just eating Cheerios, you're eating your breakfast cereal, you're going along eating, you look out the window and there's a tree in your yard and a little door opens and this little line of gnomes walks out. I'd probably drop my spoon, it would splatter Cheerios everywhere, my jaw would be dropped, I'd be like, what is going on? Uh, and a whole story <laughs> could just go from there. Um, you are flying on a plane to another city or country, but when you land, you have time traveled along with everybody else on the plane. And I'm not sure, would it be more interesting to travel to the past or the future? I don't know. Maybe you've traveled along with everybody else on the plane to prehistoric times and there are dinosaurs next to the runway. 
there we go. I don't know where that story is going to go, but I'd be really interested to find out. <laughs> uh, I'm going to come up with one more idea here off the top of my head. What should, what's another idea? What could be a really wild and crazy situation? Uh, <laughs> see, I'm looking out my window right now. I'm trying to see what I can be inspired by. Um, a person finds that all the food they cook makes people have superpowers. It doesn't matter what they cook, um, but as long as they cook it, it will give people magic powers or superpowers. So I don't know who this person cooking is yet. Um, and I don't know what the answer is. I don't know why they give people magical powers. I don't know where this story is going to go. But the thought just popped into my head. Like, what if you cooked food and you fed it to your friends or family, and then suddenly everybody at the table had a different superpower or magical power? That would be a wild situation, especially if the person who eats the food, they don't get any powers. But every time they feed their food to somebody else, it gives other people powers. What is going on? I don't know. But now I kind of want to read the story that I just came up with an idea for. Uh, you, you, when you're coming up with crazy situations for stories, try to think of the things that kind of make you go, well, now I want to find out what's going to happen because who's the best person to answer that question? You are. If you're the one curious and kind of asking the question, you're the best person to answer it too. All right. I want to see what else you guys are coming up with. Um... <laughs> Uh, Milo says, some kid meeting alien smoothies from the planet. And then it's like a bunch of random letters. So I don't know how to pronounce that. It's like jig. All right. Uh, Nim and Nish say, a cat has to go through a temple full of rattlesnakes and hidden trap doors and then a maze. And then it has a hundred meter lake full of giant flesh eating crabs and mutant ghost shrimp. <laughs> that can drown you to get to the plant of wisdom. That is a pretty wild situation. <laughs> um, all right, here's a, story, here's a story starter from Mackenzie. A child is chased into a grandfather clock and there's an alien world inside. Oh, I love that. It kind of makes me think of, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie uh, Men in Black but they go to a bus station and they open up one of the, uh, one of the lockers at the bus station. There's like a whole world inside this locker with all these little aliens and they have like a whole, you know, civilization inside. It's wonderful. So I would love to see uh, somebody go open up a grandfather clock and there's a whole elf, elf world inside. That'd be really awesome. All right. I would love to hear a few more of your guys' ideas for wild situations. So feel free to share them in that Q&A box. Um, oh, also, uh, apparently there's someone named Chloe uh, here with Mackenzie sharing ideas. So hi, Chloe. Nice to meet you over the computer. Um, all right. So also, hey, this summer also, I plan to write along with you. So if you all want to, of those three stories that I just uh, put down story ideas for, if you want to vote for one, here's a fun idea. You guys can write down in the Q&A box which idea was your favorite, and I will write that story along with you. So uh, of those three, um, which would you most like me to write a story about? The child eating breakfast, and they see a line of gnomes come out. Uh, you're flying on a plane to another city or country, but when you land, you have time traveled to dinosaur times, or a person finds out that all the food they cook makes people have superpowers. So uh, I want to show you guys, you can write about anything, any idea turn into a story. So I will write a story along with you. There we go. We're all in this together. So let's have you share a few more of your ideas here before we end off. 
Let's see, Shanna says, after school, Maroni looks up in the sky and sees Tallulah flying to the fairy realm. He runs to cover, gets his wings and flies to the fairy realm. He gets there and sees Tallulah crying. He walks over to her and when he asks her if she's okay, she looks up at him and she has white eyes, no pupils. Uh, they start fighting. Uh, yeah, it's like a lot of other stuff happens. <laughs> Shannon's got the whole start of her story here and I love it. All right, we have some votes here for which story. So great, I, I will count these up <laughs> and I'll see which one I write about because uh, I think one of the most fun things you can do is to write with a group. Uh, it's kind of like you could just write by yourself with no communication to anybody else. But I think as soon as you start talking to other writers and you're all writing together, something magical happens because you can all write your stories, you can share ideas with each other, you can give your stories to other people to read and they'll give you feedback, something amazing happens. So you guys are gonna start working on your stories, I'm gonna start working on a story, and then we're all gonna share with each other. I think it's gonna be great. Um, AG says, a poor boy is immigrating to Indonesia on a steamboat. Suddenly the boat dives under the surface of the ocean when he was close to the beach. He tries to get to the surface of the water, but he never learned to swim. Um, but he knows how to hold his breath. Um, yeah. <laughs> it says that, that, so it sounds like he has like gills on his neck. So it turns out this, this boy might be like a, like a mermaid, a merman or somebody that can breathe underwater. Sounds awesome. <laughs> Lydia says, you are eating a bowl of Cheerios and suddenly a door in the wall in front of you appears and opens and a wave of perfume comes out and a voice says, you need to go to the airport and get on plane number. There's like a long line of numbers. Um, are you going to remember that or do you need to, me to write it down? Don't answer me. I know you need me to write it down. You are a human. You humans are so weird. <laughs> uh, Lydia, that sounds really fun. I, I would really love to see that as a story. Uh, oh, Nimanish asks, uh, how many hours do we need to do on the book? Well, if you're talking about on writing your story, uh, that's really over to you. My idea is that we will work on our stories all summer. Uh, you can write one story. You can write more than one story. It's totally up to you. If you want to work on this for just an hour a week, or you want to work on it more, or however much time you have, over to you. Uh, but just yeah, work on it as much as you can. If you love to write, and we'll just work on writing our stories and getting better and better. So yeah. All right, I'm gonna do a quick little count here and see you guys have a few votes here. Uh, <laughs> it looks like a lot of the votes are for the time traveling airplane or the uh, cooking that gives you superpowers. So it might be one of those two. I think there's one vote for the, uh, the, the gnomes coming out of the tree. So I'll, I'll count these up after the webinar. Uh, oh, there's one last idea here. Uh, Chloe and Mackenzie are getting this in right under the wire before we have to end off. They say, a child is on a canoe in the Amazon River and the canoe flips over and a crocodile is charging at the kid. Will he or she make it back to the village? That's an excellent question. I wanna find out. All right, thank you guys for attending today. Thank you for watching the first of our summer school creative writing seminars. We're gonna have a lot more of these. So I'm looking forward to seeing you guys all back next week. Uh, we have a lot more webinars the rest of the week. Feel free to uh, sign up for more. And I also wanted to let you all know that we have lots of awesome courses available on heronbooks.com. Heron Books gives us all, a lot of the materials that we teach to students here at Delphian. So feel free to go to their site and check them out. They have lots of courses about writing. A lot of it has to do with like nonfiction writing or improving your grammar or how to write sentences and paragraphs. Um, I teach these books to my students and they are awesome. Uh, this is at heronbooks.com. So go give it a look. All right, thank you guys for watching today. I will see you next time. Bye.